the third result of our first law of thermodynamics is we already studied two results first result tell us that heat is a path function second result give us that energy is a property of a system and after explaining that energy we find out the first law of thermodynamics for a process undergoing in a closed system now the third point with respect to isolated system third point with respect to your first law is first law of thermodynamics says that or give us that energy of an isolated system will be constant right this is the application of the first law of thermodynamics that is energy of an isolated system will remain constant what is an isolated system we already talk about there are three types of system open system in which both mass transfer and energy transfer can takes place another one is your closed system in which only energy transfer can takes place no mass transfer is there and the third one which is your isolated system in isolated system there is no energy transfer and there is no work transfer right in an isolated system energy transfer and work transfer will not be there so heat will heat interaction will be zero and work interaction will be zero now we want to see what is the first law of thermodynamics for a isolated system as we know that first law of thermodynamics for a process this is for a process now we are dealing with only with a process so first law of thermodynamics for a process says that dq that is heat transfer will be equal to change in energy plus your work transfer this is for a process and we already know what is the assumptions of using this this formula is your closed system system must be closed system right system must be a closed system so we are saying that if the system is an isolated system in which there is no energy and there is no mass transfer or no heat transfer so with respect to that i am saying that the work interaction will be zero and this heat interaction will be zero in case of your isolated system because the meaning of isolated system is there is no heat transfer and there is no work transfer so the heat term and work transfer will be zero so we'll get this de is equal to zero de means change in energy will be zero so if the change in energy will be zero it results as that energy of that system is constant this is the total energy total energy remains constant means sum of macroscopic and microscopic energies will be constant it may be the case that within the system within the system one form of energy may be converted into another forms of energy but overall energy for that process will remain constant so this is the meaning of the first law of thermodynamics says energy of an isolated system will remain constant this is the total energy not only internal energy total energy means macroscopic plus microscopic so these three are the results of your first law of thermodynamics now we already studied that the work transfer for various processes in a closed system right we have five process constant volume process constant pressure process adiabatic isothermal and polytropic we already see that what is the work transfer in that case in all the processes in a closed system now we are more concerned about your heat transfer in various process in the closed system now we want to find what is the value of heat transfer for various processes in a closed system we are only dealing with closed system right so first of all i am taking this constant volume process first of all i am taking this constant volume process so for a process the first law of thermodynamics is dq is equal to du plus dw right first law of thermodynamics is dq is equal to du plus dw what is the assumptions if i say what is the assumptions for writing this equation assumptions for writing this equation is system must be closed 
right system must be closed i am writing here dw not pdv so here the process may be reversible or irreversible that is not a matter but i am writing de is equal to du then system must be stationary system must be stationary this is the assumptions of writing this equation reversible and irreversible we are not talking about because dw is equal to pdv if we write here then it is a reversible case so if i write dw is equal to pdv like this so we are saying first law of thermodynamics will be dq is equal to du plus pdv the assumptions for using this formula is already we test we have seen that closed system reversible process and process must be or the system must be stationary for a, if a, if the volume is constant volume is constant then this change of volume will be zero if the change of volume will be zero this term will go this term will go pdv will be zero so in that case for a constant volume process the and the heat transfer will be equal to change of internal energy right dq will be equal to change of internal energy this this when we get when the system is closed process is reversible and system is stationary and if the process is constant volume we are saying that heat transfer will be equal to change of internal energy and as we know that energy is a point function right energy is a point function so for a closed system in a for a closed system in constant volume process heat transfer will be equal to the change of internal energy and this change of internal energy this is the energy which is a point function so in that case your heat transfer will be a point function in case of constant volume process in case of constant volume process for a closed system heat transfer will be a point function not a path function it depends upon the point because your internal energy is a point function right and we already studied that heat transfer for a closed system in a constant volume process will be equal to mcv dt we already studied that m is the mass cv is the specific heat of constant volume dt is the change of temperature so dq is equal to mcv dt for a constant volume process which is equal to du from this equation so from this equation we can write that du is equal to mcv dt right change of internal energy is equal to mcv dt now there are two assumptions there are two ways to write this equation we can write this equation for two conditions these are the conditions of writing this equation du is equal to mcv dt as this we are solving this we are deriving this formula du is equal to mcv dt in this fashion right we assuming in this derivation we only assume one thing what is this that the process is constant volume process only we are assuming that the process is a constant volume process we nowhere nowhere we mentioned that the gas or the substance must be ideal or anything else so du is equal to mcv dt can be written for a constant volume process for any substance this is the important thing for any substance you can write du is equal to mcv dt if the process is a constant volume process is fixed that is constant volume you can take any substance any substance be it air hydrogen nitrogen be it anything you can write du is equal to mcv dt because in this derivation we are not taking the assumption of ideal gas if if this du is equal to mcv dt can be written for one more condition if the substance is an ideal gas if the substance if that if that substance is an ideal gas we can write for an ideal gas change of internal energy will be equal to mcv dt for any process right this will derive later on in our thermodynamic relation chapter we'll derive this 
that du is equal to mcv dt is valid for an ideal gas and that gas may goes for any process any process suppose an ideal gas is going through a constant process constant pressure process adiabatic process isothermal process any process it will go this this condition will hold good that the change of internal energy for an ideal gas is equal to mcv dt it do not depend upon the process so just make one thing if process is fixed that is constant volume then substance will be anything if substance is fixed that is ideal gas then process can be anything so you just remember these two condition where we are using du is equal to mcv dt so from this we can say that for an ideal gas i m is constant specific heat is constant so for an ideal gas internal energy is a function of temperature only for an ideal gas your internal energy is a function of temperature only if temperature changes then its internal energy will change right so this is the constant volume pressure this is the constant volume process heat transfer which is equal to du which is equal to mcv dt next process we are taking is your constant pressure process right second one is our constant pressure process where pressure is constant so the first law of thermodynamics will be dq is equal to du plus pdv right the assumptions of writing this is again we are saying closed system pdv is there then reversible du is there then system must be stationary so this p is constant so i am taking this p inside the inside this differentiation so i am writing this is dq is equal to du plus d of pv right change of pv because if p is constant i am taking it inside the differentiation it will not change anything so i can write that dq is equal to differentiation of i am saying u plus pv differentiation of u plus pv in thermodynamics this term internal energy plus pv is known as your enthalpy which we can write with the help of a letter h this h is the enthalpy which is the property of the system so this h is equal to u plus pv where u is your internal energy and pv is your flow work what is the meaning of flow work we'll discuss in when we are studying the open system flow work is the work required by a for a process when the pro, then when the process is in or when the system is in open system when there is a mass transfer what is the meaning of flow work we'll we'll discuss later on so enthalpy is equal to internal energy plus your flow work so we can write u plus pv is equal to h so the heat transfer heat transfer for a constant pressure process will be equal to your change of enthalpy and this enthalpy is a property of the system so the so heat transfer in case of constant pressure process is also a property of the system is also a point function right and we also know that from our earlier discussion we also know that heat transfer for a constant pressure process is mcp dt right we see it m is mass of the substance cp is the is the specific heat at constant pressure dt is the change of temperature so from this i can write that change of enthalpy is equal to mcp dt this is the change of enthalpy is equal to mcp dt there are two conditions as there are two conditions for this du is equal to mcv dt there are two conditions to write this dh is equal to mcp dt first condition is in this derivation we are assuming only the process is constant pressure process we are not assuming anywhere that the gas is ideal gas so this dh is equal to mcp dt is applicable for constant pressure process substance will be anything right so this dh is equal to mcp dt we can write it if the condition is the process is constant pressure the substance will be anything any substance will be there whether it will be air hydrogen nitrogen any gas any liquid any fluid will be there so if the if 
this pressure, this process is constant pressure process, then we can write dH is equal to mcp dt or if the gas, if the substance is an ideal gas, so for an ideal gas, we can write dH is equal to mcp dt for any process. So please remember if you fix one thing, if I am saying process is fixed, that is constant pressure, substance will be anything. If I fixed substance that is an ideal gas, then process can be anything, right? So for an ideal gas, dH is equal to mcp dt for any process, we'll derive it later, right? So there are two conditions to find this and from here, we can see that your mass is constant, Cp is constant. So we are, I am saying the enthalpy is a function of temperature only. So for an ideal gas, enthalpy is a function of temperature only. And for an ideal gas, your internal energy is a function of temperature only. So if any ideal gas, suppose if there is a process, if there is an ideal gas, it is going undergoing a isothermal process. Isothermal process means what? Temperature is constant. If if ideal gas is undergoing a isothermal process, as far as this temperature will remain constant, is that ideal gas internal energy will not change because it is a function of temperature. If temperature is not changing, internal energy will not change. And also its enthalpy will not change because enthalpy is also a function of temperature for an ideal gas. In an ideal gas, enthalpy and internal energy is only and only depending upon the temperature. As far as this temperature will remain constant during a process, the enthalpy and internal energy of that ideal gas will not change until and unless this temperature will be constant. 